Um, first of all, hello everybody and a very warm welcome to this uh, new ATEM webinar called How to Transform Your Media Supply Chain Using ATEM and Blue Lucy. My name is David Jarbole and I'm in charge of business development for ATEM in APAC and currently based in Singapore. I will be acting as a moderator today for this session. So before we start, um, I'd like to introduce a little bit the reason behind this, uh, this webinar. So the reason behind this ATEM and Blue Sea webinar and partnership is definitely the growing importance of the next generation of supply chain. The media industry has only recently adopted this use of the term supply chain, triggered mainly by the shift towards direct to consumer services. These supply chain are, are usually software defined and use commodity applications and infrastructure. And there was widespread discussion uh, of a new and fully digital and cloud led supply chain in the media industry since around 2016. And some companies have tried to put the theory into practice with more or less success. Nevertheless, uh, whatever the challenges of implementing next gen supply chains are, the attempt to do so cannot longer be seen as fanciful. And the COVID situation uh, worldwide has played the role of an accelerator. Uh, and the lessons learned by those early adopters are nowadays becoming a huge relevance to others. On the right side of the slide, you will see some key insights extracted from the DPP survey report released last April about the next gen supply chain. It shows that as early movers began to build out their supply chain solution, they have placed a heavy focus on intelligent automation. They were replacing what we could call the one size fits most processes with processes for did more on timeliness and relevance. And companies are more keen nowadays to have a defined workflow from receipt to distribution using exception based reporting with deployment starting from something quite small and building up at speed. It was also reported that submission and management of content in the cloud is seen as an important starting point. So this is why ATEM and Blue Sea have joined forces to be able to respond to those challenges by implementing the next generation supply chain initiative. And we will address a few use cases today during this session. But before that, let me introduce the speakers. Our first speaker today will be Julian. Julian Wright, who is the founder and CEO of Blue Lucy. Julian founded Blue Lucy in 2008, a software company which addressed the market need for cloud service orchestration in media operations. Julian has multiple years of experience in the broadcast industry and is, he has held various positions in ITV's R&D Lab and BBC Technology Division around software development, broadcast engineering, and technology consulting. Julian holds a Bachelor of Science in Communication Technology and he has a number of industry firsts to his name. Today, Julian will be able to share more about Blue Lucy solution called BLAM and how it is integrated with ATEM solution. Thank Julian very much for joining us today. Our second speaker is Pierre, Pierre Baumgartner, who is our product owner at ATEM. Pierre is part of ATEM company since 2018 where he's assuming the role of product manager for Titan Playout and Titan 5. He's currently based in Rennes in France. Prior to joining ATEM, he was involved in the development of transport stream playout, multiplexing, and monitoring systems. Pierre holds a Master of Engineering and Mathematics Computer Science Engineering from NSET in Toulouse. Thanks very much, Pierre, for joining us today. And our last, last speaker of the day will be uh, Ideaki Sugihara, who is our solution engineer based in Singapore. He will be in charge of the demo presented later today. An overview of the agenda, we'll start with a quick introduction of each company and we'll move to the use cases discussion. Three use cases today on the menu. The first one will be around management by exception. The second will be around media discovery orchestration. And the last one will be about media supply chain automation or file transcoding. We'll then have a quick demo of the cloud offload for the file transcoding as well. We'll finish with a Q&A session. So feel free to ask any question you might have using the Q&A uh, button. And please note that this webinar will be recorded and made available after the session. 
Pierre will pass you the floor for the introduction. Thank you, David. Um, so before uh, talking about uh, media supply chain, so I'm going to, um, uh, to give you an overview of uh, the Atem company. And then Julian will do the same for uh, Gulosi. Uh, it's okay, you should have it now. Yep. So, um, sorry for that. So, Atem um, is a leader in um, video distribution solutions. So uh, it is a public company since 2014. Uh, since then, it is growing fast and profitably. Uh, the foundation of such a success uh, are, first of all, a strong focus on innovation. So Aten is very active uh, in uh, on standardization committees like uh, ITU or uh, Alliance for Open Media, and uh, is investing a lot in. Uh, all the technologies, so in, in many technologies uh, that could actually improve um, the quality of experience for viewers. Based on that uh, effort on innovation, uh, ATEM uh, uh, actually is deploying uh, widely uh, its best of class products uh, for uh, many customers, so typically uh, in 2019, so last year, ATEM served nearly uh, 400 customers all around the world. And ATEM is not only uh, innovating on uh, the technology side, uh, but also uh, in the engagement with customers by creating, uh, for example, innovative business models. As a result, um, the monthly recurring revenues were up 55% last year. And these good numbers enable uh, ATEM to keep investing in on R&D. So this is also a, a very strong uh, foundation for the ATEM success. So the, uh, the headcount of engineers all around the world at ATEM is, uh, is growing rapidly and since uh, the past uh, six years. In addition to this organic growth, uh, ATEM has actually uh, started uh, the process of uh, acquiring Anevia. Uh, so Anevia is an established leader uh, of OTT and uh, IPTV uh, delivery solutions. And this merger uh, actually uh, will allow um, Yep. We will allow combine the um, high quality video encoder, multiplexer, and packager from ATEM with the strong and scalable uh, origin, packaging, uh, CDN, cloud DVR solution from, uh, from Anevia. And so the final goal is to, uh, to be able to deliver to our customers an end to end video delivery solution uh, with the constant effort of uh, bringing enhance quality of experience for the viewers and an increased average revenue per user for the, uh, the service or content providers. Julian, uh, I, uh, the floor is yours regarding Blue Lucy. Uh, thank you, Pierre. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, just to give you a, a quick uh, background uh, of Blue Lucy. I, I started the company in 2008 um, uh, as a consultancy business. So the um, the vision or the mission of the, of the business at that time was very much on uh, supporting broadcasters, content owners with the migrations um, to non-linear workflows, principally, um, and. With a, with a focus on the, the business rather than the technology. So we took a business first uh, approach to the uh, implementation or the integration of technology. Um, and the business kind of grew and, and morphed into a software business. Um, and at this time, we don't do any consulting at all. It's entirely software based. 
we started writing um, software in about 2013 um, because we could see some, some gaps in the available solutions, particularly around integration. Um, our consulting work showed time and again that the, the biggest value um, from uh, that broadcasters could derive from technology was the integration um, of systems. Uh, so we, we very much focused on that and we, we released a product in, in 2015, uh, which is called BLAM, BLAM 2, uh, Bulusi um, uh, Asset Manager as it was then, um, which, which plugged some of those gaps. Um, and we've evolved now, uh, uh, we've got the second iteration of that product, which is uh, called BLAM 3, which was um, released last year. Um, and it, it's got three main um, uh, focuses really um, streamlining uh, of uh, uh, broadcast operations through integration, um, providing orchestration, so basically automation, so the automation of once manual processes, um, uh, which allows operators to access new revenue models. Um, I think those uh, the two slides could just go back one here. Um, there you go. So th this is uh, some some media operators might recognise uh, this, um, which is lots of different media types to get to lots of different um, platforms. So that's kind of a visual summary of some of the problems we saw. Um, broadcasters, media operators tend to throw a lot of human resources at solving the problem, but we don't think that's sustainable. I don't think the industry thinks that's sustainable. So where does Bland fit? Um, here, can you just put me down to the next one for me? Um, uh, the, 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 ne the, the next slide um, kind of shows how, how BLAM fits in there and streamlines operations. And I think if you look to the right of that screen, you look at all those different platforms and all the different media that needs to be packaged for those platforms, you can see why the partnership that we form with that 10 um, is timely and probably quite powerful. Thank you, Julian. So the part, this partnership, yes, between uh, ATEM and um, uh, Blue Sea aims to um, address and improve um, so media delivery workflows. Uh, so, um, so, and these workflows are really key uh, and really critical when we are dealing with playout or channel origination. Uh, so, before to before presenting to you uh, the use cases, um, so I would like to just to uh, uh, to remind that uh, asset delivery actually we can uh, identify uh, three steps in asset delivery in asset delivery workflows. Uh, the first one, obviously, is about asset preparation. So, so here it means that uh, the video assets needs to be produced uh, or recorded from existing live events. And then uh, we may have an editing uh, phase where operators need to, uh, for example, to do some clipping. We could have also uh, some file transcoding, for example, for converting uh, master raw formats to mezzanine format for playout. And finally, we may need also some quality check uh, to, uh, to verify that the assets are 100% compliant with the playout needs. The second stage in uh, asset deliver delivery workflows is the distribution. So, make the assets available for playout or for VOD, for example, platforms. So we can consider here uh, two different strategies. One is a push strategy. So it means that once an asset is available, it is automatically pushed towards a playout system or an origin server or a CDN. And the second strategy is a pull strategy. It means that, for example, Whenever a playout system needs an asset because it is scheduled into a channel playlist, it asks for it. And finally, the third stage of uh, asset delivery workflows 
maybe the update of assets. So this is a mix of asset prepar preparation and distribution. But in addition to that, uh, we may need, uh, we may have the need to manipulate uh, two, kind of, two kinds of libraries, an online library and an offline library, which uh, is receiving the, uh, the uh, uh, asset updates. And of course, we need also to consider here automatic synchronization mechanisms between these two libraries. So let's now focus on this. Uh, let's have a look now to the first uh, use case. The first use case consists of recording some existing live events, editing these recordings, and finally making these recordings available for payout. So to address uh, this use case, um, our approach is to use three uh, different components. The first one is a recorder. So Titan Playout, the Titan Playout solution comes with a channel recorder, which is able to receive, uh, to receive sorry, schedules from an external scheduling or traffic system. It then converts this schedule into events to record. And it is able to run in a frame accurate way uh, these events to record based on time scheduling, SCTE uh, triggering, EPG or manual actions, for example. As a result, the channel recorder is creating uh, new video assets, for example, in the MXF format, which become available on a storage, on a shared storage. The second component of this use case is uh, Bilam, so the, the asset manager. Uh, so Julian, if you, uh, if you don't mind, uh, just explain yeah. here the role of uh, Bilam. Sure. Um, so this is um, very typical uh, of a, an implementation uh, of Blam. And it, it, it kind of follows what I said earlier about the integration uh, of systems. So the Blam can perform a number of functions. Principally here, um, the integration with the traffic system where we've got connectors to a, a number of traffic systems already, the BLAM can be aware um, of um, recordings that are being made on the, on the Titan uh, ingest station. And we would create placeholders for those objects. We, we may even collect some metadata about those objects from the traffic system. And then we can monitor or BLAM can monitor those arriving on the storage from Titan playout. And then we can perform some of those preparation uh, functions that Pierre mentioned earlier. So we can look at BLAM can manage the quality control either uh, using third party software tools, um, uh, assisted by, by humans, or manual um, uh, uh, quality control. Um, we can, the BLAM can provide browser based video editing, soft parting, um, and obviously. Uh, at the lower level, it, it can manage the storage. So the BLAM on a schedule aware basis can manage the movement of, of media from the storage uh, to the playout uh, station. I think there's a, a, another, um, some slides later on, which talk a bit more about the, the integration between the playout and BLAM. But the BLAM can also manage the, a typical missing media um, manifest approach where um, there are items in the schedule which are not yet on on the playouts engines and BLAM can manage the the migration of that media um, and because BLAM schedule aware it will the workflows that deliver the content and the tasks that are raised where humans are required um, are, can be prioritized based on on when they're needed on air Thank you very much, Julian. And so the third component of this use case of this workflow is uh, the playout uh, system. Uh, so typically here we have a Titan playout, which comes with a channel player, which is quite similar to the channel recorder. So here the playout Titan playout uh, so receives uh, the recordings from uh, Blam, um, along with an XML uh, companion file which contains uh, descriptive information 
on the recording, on each recording. So typically the in and out points, for example, and some editorial metadata maybe. Then uh, Titan Playout is able to uh, make it possible to actually uh, now schedule these recordings into channel playlists and then play on time these recordings for creating uh, TV channels, so for doing uh, channel origination. So this use case typically uh, can address uh, uh, different applications, um, such as channel regionalization, uh, catch-up TV uh, channel origination, or disaster recovery. The second use case we are going to, uh, to present is a classic. And so Julian already gave a, world, a word about that. So it consists of actually um, uh, grabbing missing material uh, from, uh, from a playout uh, system. So here we have two components only for this asset delivery workflow. The first one obviously is the playout system. So here the playout system is receiving a schedule, for example, in the BXF format from a, an external traffic or a scheduling system. And this schedule contains events which may refer to some missing material. So I mean uh, missing live sources, live feeds, if we deal with live events, uh, missing video files, if we are dealing with uh, uh, file-based events, or missing graphic objects, if we are dealing with uh, branding events. So in that case, Titan Playout, uh, first of all, uh, creates placeholders in its local uh, media library so that the playlist remains all time consistent. And then it submits to uh, Blam a request to get the missing content, so typically the video files, the assets, uh, to be ingested as soon as possible. So, Julian, again, if you could give us more details about the uh, the Bilam role here. Yes. Um, so as uh, 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 as we said, this is quite a, a classic um, missing media um, workflow. Really, again, um, Blam is uh, schedule aware based on its connection to to the traffic system. But the key uh, integration here is with the Titan Playout um, library component. So. Um, Blam can be made aware either on a, a push or pull basis from Titan Playout of media that is required to be to be moved up to to, to the Playout engines, um, and uh, uh, as you said, there be a, that can be any number of objects, video, audio, whatever is required in that Playout. Um, in, in terms of delivering those objects, Blam is taking a more active role. Um, in the workflow that we've built here, which is actually a, a workflow which represents uh, a real implementation. Um, so I, I recognize it. Um, so based on that, the material that's needed for play out um, or, or, or the traffic system, the, 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 the trigger doesn't really matter. Blam will um, identify where the content is, um, Blam may be managing multiple storage arrays um, and ensure that that content is um, delivered to the player engine in the correct format. So in terms of where is the, the, the media, it may be in S3, it may be uh, in archive on S3, so it needs to be restored from S3 um, first um, and the speed at which the content is restored for, from S3 um, is dependent on the need by date. So workflow prioritization is a key capability of BLAM. Workflows are priorities based on, based on need by time date. So the speed at which the, the content is restored is set by when it's needed. The um, correct transcode profile is um, set on the, the Titan file transcode engine. The, the content is transcoded and then transferred to, to the playout engine. So uh, yeah, Blam is taking a more, more active role in this view in, in that it's listening to the traffic system and the playout engine, it's managing the storage and the restore of archive, and then it's controlling 
the Titan file microservice to create the essence packaged up in the correct format for play out. Thank you, Julian. So, of course, uh, on the Titan Payout side, uh, once Titan Playout receives uh, the new assets, so the missing assets, it automatically updates its media library and its uh, channel playlist. So we have an instantaneous uh, status update so that the operator can check at any time that uh, everything is fine. So this use case actually uh, can apply. So again, it's a classic. So it can apply for any uh, channel origination application. Uh, the benefit here is that it, uh, again, it fully automates uh, the asset delivery uh, chain. Uh, and it does this automation from a single control point, which is the, uh, the playout schedule. So it means that by delivering a playout schedule to the system made of Titan Playout and Blam, this schedule delivery makes uh, the uh, asset delivery fully automated. The last use case that we are going to see uh, is, uh, is quite similar, but it is dedicated not for playout, but for nonlinear provisioning. So for VOD applications, for example. So here again, uh, so first of all, uh, in that use case, we have a first component, which is a content management system, or CMS. So this CMS is managing uh, the, all the catalogs of assets, and especially the new assets. And it is also managing the VOD offers, which can be uh, uh, proposed to the, uh, to the viewers. Based on that, it is submitting to, uh, to BLAM, to the asset manager, uh, some requests to get uh, the, uh, video, the VOD sorry, assets available for VOD uh, delivery, so for non-linear non provisioning. Uh, so this uh, request again come to, to BLAM, which is running here in combination with Titan file to uh, prepare and package uh, the video assets for VOD. So again, Julian, if you can, uh, if, you, if you want to give us more details about the 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 blam role here yep so, uh, I, I, I certainly can uh, so and just one point on that last slide actually I, I, one thing i neglected to mention was if an issue occurs whereby uh, an object is required for play out which is not in the blam is unaware of uh, we could raise alerts for that so we can send emails sms messages in system alerts to say this material is scheduled we do not or blam does not know where it is um, so somebody needs to intervene. Again, a classic, as you say. Um, to turn it, turning to this one, again, automation is the key. This time, um, BLAM is being actively driven by the content management system. So rather than BLAM pulling and interpreting um, missing media lists or schedules, it is being instructed what to do by the content management system. And Basically, what it does is a work order is sent into the BLAM via an API. Uh, the work order is parsed by the, um, the BLAM and uh, it, it then fans out a number of workflows. So a single work order will trigger potentially multiple workflows within the BLAM. And in, in this case, and again, this is a, a real world implementation that, that's described here, um, we are collecting assets based on um, the VOD schedule from the storage and managing the workflows on the Titan file to um, uh, tr transcode that content as well. So we're taking in work orders, we're processing those work orders and they are, they've got various le levels of complexity. Um, some of them are just straightforward transcode, some of them are more um, EDL based, whereby a longer form TX program that's been out on linear is, needs to be recut for delivery um, on a, uh, a non-linear VOD platform. So those work orders are processed, they're executed by Titan, um, and then ultimately they're, they're pushed out onto the, the, the player, the, the, the direct-to-consumer platforms. Um, and there's also uh, a backwards 
connector to the content management system to give updates based on work orders. So operationally, the teams are only concerned with the content management system and they only need to refer to Blam or Titan if there is an issue. So again, automation really is the key to that one. On the Titan, thank you, Gillian. On the Titan file side, so, um, so Titan file is then receiving uh, some transcoding job requests. Um, and it is uh, able, so it is a uh, Titan file is a cloud native file encoding solution. And so it will run all these transcoding jobs as soon as possible. Uh, and then we'll be able to deliver the final version of the assets for uh, so um, IPTV or OTT uh, delivery, final delivery. So uh, these uh, three uh, use cases that we presented are showing that, uh, so if we go back to, especially to Playout, that the Playout service uh, should cooperate continuously with uh, at least two additional services that we can see as backend services, which are the asset preparation and the schedule preparation. So this uh, cooperation uh, is mandatory for premium channel origination, where obviously uh, the playout system needs to receive schedules and also uh, need, uh, needs to receive all the assets to play in the right formats. This also applies to edge playout, uh, for example, uh, for ad, ad replacement applications, where obviously in TV stations or in uh, regional headends, we need to uh, uh, also manipulate local schedules like uh, local uh, ad insertion playlists and also uh, the local commercials. And finally, it also applies in the cloud uh, so typically, if we are dealing with disaster recovery or if we are dealing with virtual programming, the playout system, along with the schedule and the asset preparation services, need uh, to uh, match uh, the content to play with the user preferences or the user requests. Note also that uh, these three services uh, can run in the same location, but also may run in different locations. So for example, we could, uh, we could have um, a distributed architecture where we have a playout system running on-prem, so for example at the edge, but interfacing with uh, Blam, for example, so the asset uh, preparation, the asset manager uh, running in the cloud. So we could, by this way, consider a very easily a hybrid deployments. So to recap, actually, what are the benefits? What are the added values of uh, this ATEM and Blue Lucy partnership? So the first one is that this partnership enables workflow automation. So it means that by combining Titan with Blam, uh, we can guarantee um, safe and scalable uh, workflow processing. The second added value is the manage by exception approach. So uh, the solution actually automates workflows, but it also provides operators with utilities to check that these uh, automated workflows are running fine. And as Julian said, in case of any uh, issue or failure, the systems are also able to give the operators the task to do at any time, if any, to, uh, to fix uh, uh, the, the issues that may occur. And the last benefit is uh, the deployment models. So all the uh, systems that we mentioned today are cloud native. So uh, it means that they can equally deploy on-prem, on private data centers or in the public cloud. So by this way, you can deploy these solutions, I would say anywhere and at any time. 
and even by considering uh, hybrid models. So the last, uh, so the second part of this uh, session, sorry, is uh, a demonstration. So uh, here I'm going to, to give the mic to uh, Ideaki san. Thank you, Pierre. I'll stop sharing. Um, and you can share there. Maybe a question for you, Pierre. And, um, uh, and Julian, while uh, Ida is sharing the uh, slide, uh, yeah. do you support IMF in both uh, Blam and uh, Playout, Titan Playout? So we do support IMF in Titan File, uh, not yet in, in uh, Titan Playout, but uh, this is actually a roadmap feature. But it's already supported in Titan File at the input and, uh, and at the output. Uh, and for our side, sim similarly, management, but not creation at this time. So um, we, we can pass it through and understand it, but not actually writing out uh, IMF packages at this time. We, we kind of uh, offload that to um, uh, third parties, um, which do it uh, a lot better than we can. Okay, thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you, David. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for your time and interest uh, in participating this webinar. I hope uh, you guys are enjoying this. And uh, we are coming to the uh, even more interesting bit. Um, for today's demo, we'll be demonstrating the smart offload management of transcoding jobs using BLAM on Atom Titan File Microservices, which is running between public cloud and uh, an instance, instance which is running on premise as well. To provide an overview of the demo, demo environment, there are three functional blocks in this demo, as you can see in the slide. One is BLAM, which is the brain of this whole workflow. The other two blocks are Atem's file based transcoder called Titan File running on microservices. So, one of the instances you see in the bottom is deployed on premise based on a Kubernetes cluster. And the other one is running on public cloud or AWS EKS, where we also enable the auto scaling group with spot, spot instance configured. So why is, if there are a lot of jobs assigned to the public cloud uh, cluster at once, the worker node instances on the cluster automatically scale out to process them simultaneously. And once the assigned jobs are processed, it's automatically scaling. Um, also, vice versa, on prime uh, on-prem cluster, uh, we will be able to do the auto scale on scaling. However, it's very well depend upon the number of worker nodes available on premise. To top it all, to control the job flow automatically, we'll be using Blam as a, a whole workflow manager. Moving to the next slide. Uh, so we will, uh, in, this, in this demo, where the BLAM decide which job should be assigned to which cluster to decide whether it should be on-prem or public cloud uh, based on the number of jobs in queue on, in on-prem cluster. For the demo purpose, we set the maximum queue size on the, uh, on the on-prem cluster to two. So in this case, uh, if there is already two unfinished jobs on the on-prem cluster, then Blam uh, decides and offloads the jobs to the public cloud transparently. I think it will be interesting to see the actual system. Um, uh, we can actually show the, um, the UI of the Blam and Titan file. So here, there are three windows on the screen. On the left side is the Blam UI. On the right side, there are two instances of Titan file microservices UI. The upper one is running on the public cloud and the bottom one is on the on-prem. Let's jump a bit more uh, detailed view on the uh, BLAM uh, to start with. Julian, would you like to go through uh, the web UI of uh, BLAM for us? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, I will, yeah, let's, let's have a quick overview. There's, there's obviously quite a lot in the product. I mean, this one is very specifically set up to demonstrate uh, this capability. Um, I quite liked your three, 
three open views there on one screen showing me showing that live integration is quite quite complicated. <laughs> this view um, is the media view um, of Blan. Uh, the reason why we're showing this is because um, this is where an operator would typically uh, directly manage their media. So um, left-hand side, search workspaces projects, they're for kind of local management. There's obviously a frame accurate uh, browse-based video player at the top. There's also versions and relationships um, on the top right. Probably too much detail for today. At the bottom, we can see a little bit of technical detail about the file. So um, as content comes into the plan, we uh, inspect it and, and, and save that data uh, to the database. So uh, operators, technical operators can see um, what the file format is. Um, so that, that's kind of an operational view. Um, Hyde, would you switch to the um, workflow builder for me? Um, and there we go. And if you just go to the search view, um, on, on the left hand side, um, we've got all of the various widgets, which are Blue Lucy widgets. They are the functional blocks that, that make up uh, a workflow in Blam. There's a couple of hundred of them uh, in total. Um, they perform uh, atomic functions within themselves. So there's a few examples there, zipping and unzipping files, uploading to S3. Um, and hi, if you just type Titan in, in, the, in the search box at the top left, um, we'll just take a quick look at the widgets that, that have been developed, there we go, um, that connect to the ATEM system. So we've got four widgets at the moment. Each one performs a very specific function. Um, uh, controlling Titan um, transcode engines, um, uh, listening to uh, or interrogating a Titan playout library, and uh, the Titan load balancer, which is um, uh, an important uh, workflow, uh, an important widget in, in building these um, load balancing uh, workflows. Um, so that's a very quick overview of the workflow, but I hope you can all understand it. The guys have actually built three workflows for this demo. So there's, uh, let's start with the first one, Transcode AWS, AWS, that one, yeah, perfect. So very simply, this, this workflow, it's triggered probably manually or triggered from another workflow. It will check where a file is and then run a Titan um, uh, Transcode uh, profile based on the instructions that are sent down. So that's a transcode um, uh, uh, widget. If you go to the load balancer one, Titan MS uh, load balancer, uh, there we go. If you just double click on the widget there, you can see the, the configuration of the uh, widget, which is basically, um, it's in, in simple terms, it's interrogating the, the, the Titan microservice engines to find out how many jobs they've got and, and how far through those jobs are and the widget will make a decision as to where to send the next job based on that queue information and there are variables here to say what is the maximum queue length the guys have said it just to two and three i think um, but the idea is is that this widget will make decisions about based on real information real-time information as well so when a new job comes in the, 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 the load balancer will query the Titan engines and say, get data on their queues and then assign the next job to whichever Titan engine has the lowest number of, uh, or the shortest queue. The guys have set up two here, but you could set up as many um, Titan engines as you need to. Um, so the, guy, the way this one's been set up actually is that the guys are going to um, send in a number of um, transcode jobs simultaneously and then we can watch, if we can get everything on one screen, we can watch the, uh, the BLAM uh, allocating the jobs to, to, the, um, to, to the various uh, uh, transcode engines that we've got. 
Okay, uh, Julian, probably I can go through the Titanfall UI and then yeah. probably you can run through with us the uh, offload demo itself. Yeah. Yes, yes, I will do it. Thanks. Um, okay, so to give a quick uh, overview on the Titanfall UI, on the jobs window, we'll be able to see the list of jobs we transcoded or transcoding or scheduled as well. Um, in the templates window, uh, we are able to see the templates uh, which we'll use to create jobs. In the job composer page, we can create jobs manually if uh, that's the uh, preferred way. And uh, in the watch folders window, uh, you can see that we can set the desired watch folder from where you prefer to pick the content from, right? In, in, in a nutshell, um, we can able to add the jobs in three ways. So A being manually, B through watch folder, C through recipe. For this demo, the jobs are created by Blam using the REST API available in the Titanfall microservices. Maybe Julian, now you can actually go through your uh, workflow on the on-prem or AWS directly. Apologies on, on the mute. Um, <laughs> uh, so what the demos have set up is that they, a number of assets are in the platform. You can see them there. Um, and they've been added to, to a workspace. A, a workspace in BLAM is a, a temporary holding bin, if you like, for assets that, 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 that you want to share with others. Uh, in this case, we're going to send all of those assets, I think there's six in there, um, into a single uh, workflow. So hi, would you just right click on the demo there? Um, and then you can say, um, uh, Demo Titan Transcode Load Balance, that's the one. Yep, go for that one. Um, and just click OK. Uh, OK, and so now those six assets have been sent into that one workflow. So we've got to do this quickly. Let's go to the workflow monitor. Um, there we go. Uh, and it's gone through already. <laughs> um, uh, so it's fast, isn't it? Um, so the workflow monitor, you can see that those objects have been sent through. Um, the blocks, the blidgets have turned green to say that they've been successful. If there are problems, they turn amber or red, depending on um, what the fault is. And now you can see that the jobs have been separated out and queued on each of the separate engines. So this is the on-prem one, and it's running a job now. And there's another job queued on the top there, on the, on the left-hand side, you can see the second job. And then on the AWS queue, there's three jobs on the AWS queue. One is in progress, pale green. Uh, and if you go to just go to the, the, the block above, um, yeah, you, you can see that the, the objects are, uh, are, are queued. And there you go, you've managed it to get all three on, on the screen at the same time. The, um, uh, the ATEM engines there running before your very eyes. I think while we are uh, witnessing the uh, processing happening, I think uh, we would like to emphasize that, um, that the use case what you see is uh, for load balancing workflow, but uh, this can be applied for uh, other use cases as well, such as disaster recovery purpose, where uh, if your on-prem cluster cannot be reached or out of, of uh, function, we could be able to use the automatic offload to public cloud as well. Um, similarly, if you prefer to run your transcoding jobs across multiple uh, clusters or multiple platforms, you could apply the same logic uh, where we will be able to load balance the uh, transcoding jobs across multiple instances or across multiple sites. So uh, this is what we would uh, wanted to uh, summarize on, on the demo today. Probably let's swing back to the Titanfall UI to see the progress of the transcoding. Maybe one job it's still transcoding, I believe. Uh, but I think meanwhile, we can able to check the one which is already transcoded. There you go. So that's the one from on-prem. Nice.
Yeah, so I think just to just to uh, wrap, wrap up that demo, we, we demonstrate it in a very simple way. Just throw a handful of assets in, and they get assigned to the most appropriate. Sorry, they're load balanced, but the, the scope of what is, is achievable is great scale, sort of near infinite scale, um, and also using the most appropriate resources. If, if the objects are in the cloud, use the cloud-based. If they're on-prem, use the on-prem-based. Um, and also overall system resilience. So if you lose a site or you lose some capability, the platform, the BLAN platform is aware of that and will assign the jobs to the resources that are available to it. And again, um, it, 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 it's worth mentioning that all of the, the workflow could be, um, uh, uh, all the workflows are prioritized in BLAM as well. Thanks, Julian. So I think this demo workflow is just one example and uh, we could create similar workflows, including this kind of decision logic very easily to achieve uh, uh, a certain uh, requirements by we want to uh, introduce new new workflows, new decision making process to leverage upon the uh, multiple sites or, or, or based on your use cases. So I think that's the summary uh, from our end for the demo. Uh, so David, back to you. Thank you very much, Babu. Thank you, guys. Um, a couple of uh, questions then uh, popping in, uh, maybe for you, Julian. Uh, what is the technology used in the workflow builder? Um, is it open source VPN? Uh, uh, it is actually um, a proprietary um, workflow engine that we have built. Um, it is open and extensible though. So it, it has been deliberately built to be open. It was written in C sharp. Um, we have SDKs whereby operators can build their own widgets either in um, C sharp, Python, and coming soon, possibly Q2 next year, uh, Java. So if you've got an in-house development capability, you can build your own widgets and add them to the system. And we actively have customers doing that right now. So we will build widgets to any commercially available platform or product, but some people, some operators have legacy systems, proprietary legacy systems that only their engineers can talk to, and BLAM allows you to, to write your own widgets and, and collect data from those systems. So it is entirely open. Okay. And which coding language can you can be used for scripting in Workflow Builder to create custom workflow? Uh, so within you can build your own widget in um, C Sharp or Python, and in terms of scripting, you can just copy and paste C Sharp directly into a widget that will execute that. Um, so you can actually you can you can prototype uh, in the platforms off the shelf within uh, uh, very quickly. Okay. Uh, still for you on the on the, on the workflow builder, can we create custom VOD packages with all required required file types, video, audio, subtitle, posters, and metadata, uh, XML in custom cable lab specs per destination? Yes. So um, the the view we would we were on briefly in the demonstration, and I, I'm happy to to go into this in more detail in in another session or or privately. There was a view uh, where we've seen the relationships between assets. So typically the video asset is the master and it will have child assets associated with it and they are language tracks, um, subtitles, poster arts, uh, key arts, hero art. And as an operator, you can use those relationships, aggregate together the objects that you want and send them into a workflow and that workflow will package the items up or instruct another system to package them up and then deliver them onto the direct to uh, consumer platform. Excellent, thank you. Another one, um, is it possible to keep items in local queue if their owner date is far away? So as to use expensive cloud resources only when necessary. Uh, certainly there's, uh, Within the workflows, you can you you can set any rules you like, really. So it's entirely in your gift, um, and we can we can 
look, we can run queries. I, there is a widget that will run a query of the database, and you can run that every hour, or every day, and the, the query might look like, give me a list of assets that are required this week, or give me a, a list of assets that are required next week, and you can make just different decisions based on those. So you can do that kind of just-in-time um, workflow whereby you don't start pulling content down until you're, you're until you need it. Um, that's all configurable within the widget. So yes, you can manage multiple queues. Thank you. Another one is: Can we trigger workflows via API? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, so as well as the widget SDK, there is a, a full uh, API on both the Blam and uh, Titan products. That's how we, we talk to each other. Um, and yes, you can fire a, a workflow by, uh, trigger a workflow by uh, calling a specific endpoint. And again, we have customers actively doing that now where the Blam is a slave um, uh, system that just runs workflows. And link to, to API also and workflows is can we assign different components, video, audio, subtitle to different workflows via API? Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, so you can aggregate them together. Um, in fact, we've done this for one of your customers, actually. Um, so yes, you can through the API as well. Excellent. Cool. Um, a question for Pierre. Uh, in the first example, uh, use case number one, uh, what is the density of Titan Record and Titan Playout per server, uh, and how does the microservices architecture is impacting this? Well, actually, uh, yes, because um, uh, Titan Playout is a, a cloud native uh, system. So it is based on microservices. So it means that it, it can run on um, a cluster of multiple nodes. So you could have only one node, so like an appliance, but you could have also in your cluster multiple nodes. So I mean multiple servers, if we are on-prem, or multiple EC2 instances, for example, if we are on AWS. So one node on Playout can do up to four HDs. Uh, if we use, uh, let's say, a traditional uh, Playout workflow with uh, the automation, uh, a switcher, a video server, and a graphic inserter. As for the recorder, uh, it can do 20 uh, simultaneous record sessions uh, on one node from uh, uncompressed or TS uh, sources. Thank you, Pierre. Uh, another one, um, which could be there for, for you, Pierre, or for Julian, is on the offload workflow when using the public cloud to run services, uh, is there a way to track the costs? of the offloaded transactions? Uh, yeah, yes, there is actually. Um, we, we didn't show it, but we do have quite a comprehensive um, finance tracking uh, module within the platform uh, that can track your AWS, or in fact can track any costs. Um, and it, it also tracks them in real time as well. So we, we've got, to, uh, the, the thing about the cloud is it, it's very, very scalable um, and it's very, very powerful. One concern, whether that's true or not, is, is that the costs are effectively open-ended. Um, you don't know how much something's going to cost. So we built a module, um, which we finished up earlier this year, which allows all services that are cloud-based and managed by BLAM to be tracked. So you get a real-time view of, of what the platform is costing you. We can even tell you, actually, how much a specific asset has cost in its lifetime. So since you received it, your storage costs uh, or your transco costs or your, uh, your transfer costs. Um, so yeah, there's, there's quite a comprehensive model there. Thank you. Uh, maybe last question before we arrive at the end of the, the session. Uh, in the example number two, the second use case, does BLAM precondition uh, transcode the media for playout and what file format does Titan playout support? Uh, yes, it won't be here. Yes, uh, so actually, uh, so today Titan Playout supports MXF OP1A uh, files containing XDCAM uh, video, 
and PCM audio and S, uh, SMPTE for 36M for the captions. Uh, in the roadmap of Titan Playout, so uh, of course we plan to, uh, to support more wrappers, more file wrappers, I mean, and more codecs. The next uh, to come uh, is uh, .mov uh, with ProRes uh, Video Essence. Excellent. Um, you wanted to add something, uh, Julian? Uh, no, no, um, we, we, no. Uh, we, we, we control the, um, the, the, the Titans to produce whatever file formats require. So that's kind of, uh, we just pass the messages and um, uh, uh, Titan takes care of the work. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Then, um, well, this will be uh, closing then our, our session for today. Um, if you have any question, you can reach us to this uh, email address, sales at atem.com, and we can pass uh, over any question either to Julian or Brucey or to uh, Pierre or Titan Payout uh, or Titan File related questions. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Thank you very much, Pierre. Thank you very much, uh, Julian and, uh, and Babu and Ida for the demo. Uh, and I wish you all a very good day wherever you are in the world. And see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.